Walker, as it stands today, started out a long time ago in, uh, in the early 80s when I was a graduate from computer science and I decided I was seeing the, the microcomputers, personal computers, be coming into the workplace and thought they would need to be managed the way uh, heretofore the mini and mainframe computers were. And so I started a business that was designed around helping those, um, helping those companies with those computers. I called it balanced computer support um, because the idea was we were going to balance high tech with human touch. And so that was the business. And since that point, uh, it has grown to where it is today with uh, close to 50 employees and with clients and employees all, all over the United States. So I um, went to business school and I was taught that business is supposed to be all about and only about the money. And at that time, he just sort of accepted the fact that, of course, that's the way it is. Uh, but as time went on, I started to recognize the fact that it didn't have to be all about and only about the money. That was a choice that we were, that we were making. And um, I also found that it, was a, uh, it, it wasn't as satisfactory to run a company like that to, um, and, and probably not to work for a company like that. And so started to uh, investigate some alternative business structures. And after reading uh, a book called Divine Right of Capital by Marjorie Kelly, I realized that I wanted to do something different. And I realized that the type of company that I wanted to run was called a social enterprise. And a social enterprise, in, in my mind, can have three different flavors. You can have a social enterprise that is uh, that is doing something for the greater community, for the greater good, uh, through a product. So maybe they make some solar panels or some, some kind of products that are going to help make the world a, uh, a better place to live in. Uh, or it could be through the employees or the operations, so that maybe they hire people with barriers to employment. Uh, they do other things as a way of contributing uh, in that form or they can be doing it through a share of the profits, like think of Newman's own. We're a technology company. It felt like the, the best way for us to do that was sharing in the profits uh, and, and, and figuring out ways to be in the community in a more meaningful way. And so what we did was to uh, establish the fact that we would have a employee stakeholder program where employees share in the profits based on the contributions that they make to, to the Walker community and that we would share one third of distributed profits to the, to the community itself to, to nonprofits in various areas. And so that, that is a, a social enterprise. A social enterprise is a company that is trying to um, contribute to the greater good and, and, and using their profits in order to do that. And so the profits become a means to an end rather than the end in itself. They are a metric of health, but they aren't the be all and end all. The, the model, there are many models that people are trying as sort of alternative to the traditional um, business structure. Uh, there's ESOPs, there's co-ops, um, and another one that is called the Perpetual Purpose Trust Owned Company, and that's the one that we decided to uh, go with for, for a number of reasons. But what that means is that uh, I, as the founder, sell the company to the trust that ensures my retirement um, plan so it's not I'm not just giving away the company but it is sold to a trust which then um, is is structured so that the Walker group can never be sold uh, again for um, for any purpose if it is um, deconstructed it will be all the assets end up going to to charitable causes so there's no incentive to to sell the company and no real legal way to do that and so it's as if the company owns itself um, and people think that that's very odd but 
but I say think of it like you think of your your nonprofit organizations that are out there. They are a legitimate legal organization, but nobody owns them. Um, the community, in a sense, owns them, and that's that's what we have now with the Walker Group. The Walker Group owns itself, and the employees are the the caretakers, and they are incented to um, to give their all to this company because it's going to come back to them in terms of a a, a more holistic um, and and greater community sense among them and between them and then also the knowledge that one third of the distributed profits will go to them in th with the um, stakeholder program and then one third of their profits will go distributed profits will go to the community and um, and that that feels good as well so those are the main components of the of the perpetual purpose trust When I'm personally doing business with another business, um, I love it when I am working with the local farmer, uh, when I am buying from a store that I feel I understand who they are and if I understand their, their goals, their values, their mission. And I think for our clients, I mean, particularly for, for our nonprofit clients, it's a total no-brainer because they are uh, able to 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 see that we are giving back to the community in very meaningful ways but even for for other businesses that are out there the the awareness that we are um, that we take this very personally that we are uh, are a values based company that ethics are important to us and the idea of giving back is important means a lot to clients rather than having a company that's in it for the money and and as long as it's legal they should be doing everything they can do to maximize their profit we have a different goal and I think that shows in the people that we hire they get great people and it shows in the services that we that we provide them I'm ecstatic about it because it's been a long time coming. I've been I've been um, sort of walking down this path for um, probably 20 years, and then the last 10 has been a real um, a real push, and and it's been hard because because you know we're the first one in Connecticut, and um, and and one of only a handful in the United States. It's a lot more common in Europe, but because we're traveling down this um, somewhat uncharted path, every step is met not only with, you know, there's, there's nothing out of the box, there's no recipe, there's no formula that you can say, okay, I wanna go in this direction. And not only that, there's very few people who get it, who understand, who've, who've gone down this path before. So I'm ecstatic that we have made it to the other side and that we can serve as a, a role model um, just to open eyes to the fact that you can do things in a different way. And then personally, I would love to be able to work with other business owners to be able to say, yeah, you can, and this is how cool it is, and this is, this is how you can do it. So we can help grow this model and make it more um, visible and more, more easily attained in the, in the future. Because I think it'll be good for the businesses, and I think it will be definitely good for us as a community and as a civilization. <laughs>